friends in this video we are detailed study about what are the different types of drives which is required for the sugar manufacturing processes so first of all we can understand how sugar will be created by the means of the sugar cane so friends there are the different manufacturing processes by which we can get a finished product of the sugar crystal so a typical sugar production processes involves a different sugar cane harvesting so basically these the sugar canes are basically harvested in the different types of farms so the farmers will be harvesting the different types of sugar cane after that that the sugar cane will be transferred to the different types of the sugar industry so in that particular process the first process for the sugar industry will be that so that will be the cane preparation so in the cane preparation we have to prepare the different types of the sugar cane according to our requirement so we want to cut the different uh, shapes of the canes into a small small size and after that we are moving towards the next process of the mechanical system that will be called it as a juice extraction so in that particular juice extraction system we have to remove the juice from that particular cane and after that we have to forward this the juice to the clarification process so the impurities which are present in that particular the different the juice so that will be removed by this method which will be called it as a clarification and after that the clarification manufacturing process that sugar juice will be going to the filtration process so in that particular filtration process we have to remove the small small impurities that will be cleared by the clarification process so after that uh, that the juice will be given to your section which will be called it as a section of the evaporation so in that particular evaporation some of the additional impurities or uh, some of the part of the different types of the moisture present that will be evaporated by the means of the device which will be called it as an evaporator so that will be the very very important process in the sugar industry then the next process of the sugar manufacturing process will be called it as a sugar boiling that will be called it as a crystallization so in that particular process we have to manufacture the different types of crystals of sugar as per our requirement so after that the process will be called it as a centrifugation process so what do you mean by the centrifugation that we can uh, discuss later on so this is one of the important process in the manufacturing uh, industry of the sugar and uh, the last process for the sugar manufacturing process will be called it as a sugar drying process so friends as we know that there are the different types of processes which will be carried out in the sugar industry so in a sugar industry we have to prefer the different types of drive because we have to go to the different types of the processes so each and every process will have a different requirement and according to that particular requirement we have to use the different types of drives in that particular sugar manufacturing processes so friends let's we can uh, check that is the simplified production process from the sugar cane so again we have to detail that will be the first sugar cane feeding that will be given to that particular mill station so this is called it as a cane mill so in that particular cane mill station uh, we have to crush that particular sugar cane so we have to add some of the water in concern with that so after that we are getting uh, some of the mixed juice so that the mixed juice will be going to the second process that will be called it as the clarification process so in that the clarification process we have to clear the juice so some of the additional impurities that we are going to the different clarification process now we have to remove that is a filter cake because some of the impurities that we want to remove from that particular process similarly in the mill station we will get one of the type of the by product from that particular sugar cane this is the bagasses are there so after that the process of the clear juice will be directly sending to the process of the evaporation so in that particular evaporation we have to remove some of the moisture content in that particular juice so obviously from that we can get a very pure juice so basically that the pure juice will be again going to the next process of the crystallization so the by product or the wastage of that particular evaporation process will be called it as a condensate contaminated 
refrigeration water so that will be removed from that particular system then the syrup of the sugar cane that will be going to the final process or we call it as very important process in the sugar industry that the process will be called it as a crystallization so depending upon the requirement of the consumer or the different types of the sugar crystals are present so in that particular process we have to create just the different types of uh, processes by which we can get the different types of the system so the the byproduct from this particular system that will be getting the some of the wastage that will be removed from that particular process so now after the crystallization process we are getting the saccharose so saccharose is nothing but uh, it is a product that will be called it as crystals plus uh, syrup so now that the saccharose will be going through the centrifuge so this is uh, one of the important use of the centrifuge so in that particular centrifuge uh, we are just removing the molasses so what do you mean by the molasses it is one of the type of waste that we are removing from that particular system and from that particular molasses we can form a different type of the byproduct that the byproduct sometime will be called it as the ethanol or some of the contents of the different types of the minerals okay so in that we are basically adding some of the water so from that particular centrifuge we are getting a very finished product that would be called it as a sugar so friends these are the simplified production process from the sugar cane in the different types of the sugar industry so friends let's we can understand the actual basic concept uh, so there are the different processes are there there are the different manufacturing systems are there so according to our requirement we have to use the different types of motors so friends as we seen that these are the some of the images of your motor so friends in the sugar industry we are preferring a lot of type of the dc motor lot of type of the ac motor because there are various processes and the each process has its own requirement so friends we are preferring the different types of motor for the cane leveler main mill continuous centrifuge batch centrifuge grpf TRPF, fiberizer, feed pumps, fan and auxiliary motor. So friends, these are the some of the examples or the some of the pictures of that particular motor that will be employing for a different different purposes in the sugar industry. So friends, that particular image from we can get the basic fundamental thing. So we have to require the different types of motor at that particular use in the sugar industry so friends let's we can discuss which type of motor which will be used for the which type of purpose so now we can discuss in detail what do you mean by the different thing so friends there is one term in that particular uh, system that will be the grpf and trpf so first of all we can understand what do you mean by the grpf and what do you mean by the trpf so friends first thing that is the uh, grpf means is very simple concept that will be the grooved roller pressure feeder and uh, trpf tends to the toothed roller pressure feeder are basically installed with the mill to enhance the cane crushing capacity of the mill and helps in the decreasing the bagasse moisture so friends as we seen that when we are uh, sending the sugar cane into the industry so the first process will be called it as the uh, preparation of that particular cane into the different small pieces and after that we have to extract the juice from that particular sugar cane so friends as we seen that this is the shape of the grpf or trpf so according to that particular the juicer or we call it as the crusher so from that we have to see the different type of shape it was so while we are inserting the small small pieces of the sugar cane so this load will be continuously rotated by the machine so as we seen that friends the from that particular machine so why we are using such type of machine because we have to basically enhance the crushing capacity of the mill because as you know that if you want to get the more product from that particular sugar industry we have to extract the juice from that particular sugar cane without its moisture content so we have to create or we have to get the juice in terms of the very very depth manner so we have to reduce the moisture content in that particular the by product which will be getting from that particular sugar cane so that's why we are preferring this type of the shape of the instrument that will be called it as grpf and trpf by which we can get the juice so this is the, the actual load and for the driving of that particular load we have to see that we have to use a different type of motor which will be having very very high starting torque because in the sugar industry we have to 
get the load that will be in very very large form so we have to just uh, connect a motor which will be having a very high starting torque to that particular system so after that friends we have to see some of the picture so as we seen that the before 1980 years we have to use the different types of the dc motor for the sugar industry but friends nowadays we are obsoluting some of the dc motor by means of the ac motor because uh, this dc motor having contain some of the difficulties or uh, some of the disadvantages so that's why we are uh, now preferring in the sugar industry most of the ac motor but friends previously as shown in figure we will use uh, some of the applications that will be called it as the dc motor for mills because this will be the application that will be in the previous days so for the sake of that we are using the different capacities of the motors uh, so the capacity of this motor will be ranging from uh, 0.37 kilowatt to 1500 rpm to the range between 2500 kilowatt at the 250 rpm so friends as we seen that from the rating we are using that is uh, low power high speed application so it is a high speed as we seen that and uh, as we seen that that is a high power low speed so obviously in concern with the low power high speed and high power low speed we can get the concept by which we can get this thing because as we seen that the motors using the sugar industry that will be various depending upon of your uh, different types of the mills so as we seen that the capacity of mill will be the different so at that particular capacity of mill we have to use such a different types of the rating of your motor so as we know that if you want to get the 2500 kilowatt so it is 2500 kilowatt that is a 250 rpm so it means that the power capacity of these machines will be very large and the speed of that particular machine will be reduced so at that particular purpose obviously nowadays we are preferring instead of the dc motor uh, we have one motor that will be called it as the induction motor and uh, in the induction motor the motor which will be giving the high starting torque that the motor will be called it as a slipping induction motor so obviously nowadays instead of the dc motor we are preferring the three phase slipping induction motor for that particular purpose now friends we have to discuss which type of the dc motor because again this will be one of the image in the previous days where we can use for the centrifuges so these are the various centrifuges by which we have to use the different types of the motors for that particular system so for the centrifuges purpose in previous days we are using the dc motor so what do you mean by the centrifuges why we have to use the centrifuges so basically the centrifuges used in the production of sugar are designed for processing mixture of sugar crystals and molasses which is produced by the crystallization phase of sugar refining so this is called it as a centrifuge so we have get the basic fundamental concept why the centrifuges are used in the industry so the centrifuges are basically used in the production of the sugar are designed for the processes mixture of the sugar crystals and the molasses which is produced by the crystallization phase of the sugar refining so that's why we will require the centrifuges so in that particular centrifuges in the previous days we are preferring the use of the dc motor nowadays again these centrifuges are replaced by the ac motor that we can discuss so friends next now we have to discuss which type of motor so this is one of the image of the ac motor so as we seen that this is one type of the ac motor which will be basically used for the cane leveler circuit and the chopper circuit so nowadays obviously friends we are preferring the ac motor for the sugar industry because lot of its advantages that is robust construction the efficiency should be higher different uh, material the different type of the control circuitry which will be required for the dc motor or we said it as the instead of the dc motor we are preferring the ac motor because of its uh, inherent characteristics of the controllability so that's why in the sugar industry uh, we are using the ac motor for the different type of purposes so such purposes so uh, as shown in figure this this is the ac motor that will be called it as induction motor specially that will be preferred for the cane leveler circuit okay and uh, this is the machines as we known that according to its enclosures we have to use a totally enclosed machine because uh, in the the atmosphere in the sugar industry will be look like that so it will having uh, some of the conditions so due to that we are preferring that is a totally enclosed fan cooled induction motor and the rating of such a motor will be called it as 1500 kilowatt for your system 
So this is one of the type of uh, motor that we are preferring for the sugar industry. After that friends we can understand uh, the AC motors are uh, again used for the continuous centrifugesis because as we have earlier discussed what do we mean by the centrifugesis because for the fermentation of the sugar crystal we have to reduce some of the molasses from that particular system so we have to use the centrifugesis and by centrifugesis we have to get the different two byproduct one is the sugar crystal and second will be the molasses so for the sake of that we have to use nowadays the AC motor for the continuous centrifugesis so friends as we seen in that particular the images we have to see these are the some of the centrifugesis by which we can get the different types of molasses from that particular system so the rating of the ac motor that we are using from the continuous centrifugesis these are some of the examples so in that particular images we are using the 55 kilowatt rating of your ac motor and uh, 90 kilowatt of your uh, motor that would be using for the continuous centrifugesis and as per our requirement if the sugar industry's size will be larger then obviously we have to prefer 110 that is 110 kilowatt rating of your machine so these are uh, the some of the ac machine that we are preparing from the different types of the continuous centrifugesis in the sugar industry now we are going to discuss about the duty cycle of the centrifuge so this centrifuge that we are using in the different type of the sugar industry so we can understand how the duty cycle will be working so friend this is the actual curve which will be drawn as a speed time curve of a centrifuge so depending upon this speed time curve we will get the duty cycle of your centrifuge so first of all we can understand what are the different contents of the duty cycle so what do you mean by the duty cycle that is the total operation period divided by the total time period of your centrifuge so it will contain uh, depending upon its uh, speed and uh, time characteristics so it should have some of the bits that would be called it as the charging second that is the accelerating then third that is the spinning fourth that is breaking and a fifth that will be called it as a discharging mode so depending upon that the duty cycle the centrifuges are uh, basically used in a different type of the sugar industry so the typical centrifuges can be processes that is a 20 to 28 loads per hour so depending upon uh, that the requirement we can get the duty cycle of the centrifuge so what will happen in case with the charging station what will be happen while we are doing the accelerating why will be basically happen while doing the spinning and after that there should be a breaking and the discharging section was there so in order to keep this cycle time the drive system must be able to maintain a reliable constant torque control during the acceleration and spinning so friends as we know that while we are considering the centrifuge for the sugar industry so this uh, period of the charging to the acceleration which will be very very small or we call it as a some time this the period will be called it as acceleration period so what will happen at that the period of the charging so the voltage is uh, gradually increasing for that the particular motor so this the motor will be accelerate in that the period particular period so that the period from this which will be treated as an accelerating so what is the requirement for the motor for that the accelerating period so these uh, centrifuge motors that we are using should have a high acceleration okay so similarly while we are attaining the acceleration so after some time the drive or the motors will be running at a constant speed at the required speed so that the process that we are using in the different type of the sugar industry that is the spinning so for the sake of the spinning again we will require that is a torque should be maintained constant because uh, depending upon constant torque we will get the different applications so this is in concern with the duty cycle of your centrifuge now friends we will uh, discuss the different types of the auxiliary unit so what do you mean by the auxiliary unit so these are called it as the some of the dc motor some of the ac motor nowadays we are uh, replacing these dc motor by the ac motor so these ac motors are employing for the various important processes but apart from that particular various uh, 
the important process we have the different auxiliary units or the auxiliary system in the sugar industry so what are the different auxiliary system because we will require the different types of pumps so for the sake of that we have to use the different types of the motor so instead of the dc motor nowadays again we are preferring for the auxiliary unit we have to prefer the different types of the motors that will be called it as the ac induction motor so these hc induction motors are preferred for the different processes so these different processes which will be calling for the motor for the boiler feed pump because in the boiler section we have to feed some of the water and for the feeding of that particular water we have to use a driving system and for that particular driving system we have to use one motor and that motor will be obviously a induction motor so that will be the first use of ac induction motor that we are using for the boiler and motor feed pump then the second applications of that particular induction motor that is called it as id and fd so what do you mean by the id so it is a induced draft fan so as we know that for the cooling purposes and for the different types of the purposes in the sugar industry we have to maintain some of the temperature within limit so for the sake of that we have to use the induced draft of fan and some of the time we are using the forced draft fan so for the sake of the driving of that that particular two fans it is called it as an induced draft fan and forced draft fan we have to use the ac induction motor and friends as we know that in that the auxiliary section of the sugar industry for the pumping purpose again we have to use the ac induction motor and uh, in that particular sugar industry we have to move some of the part of the sugar cane from one place to another place or if you want to do the some of the maintenance purposes of your machine so we have to move machines from one part to the another part so for the sake of that we are using the different types of crane so for the sake of crane again we have to prefer the ac induction motor as an auxiliary unit in the sugar industry so friends for the sake of this and so many auxiliary purposes we have to use the ac induction motor in the sugar industry now friends we have to discuss in detail which type of motor will be used for the which type of purposes so these are the particulars this is the type of motor and the rating of that particular motor we have to take on uh, one of the reference of the industry so this is a first particular by which we have to use motor so we have the purposes that will be call it as the hosting drum drive and for the sake of that we have to use different type of the squirrel cage or sleeping induction motor so the rating of that particular motor will be ranging in between 25 to 35 hp okay then the second type of uh, the motor that will be using for the holding drum drive so for the sake of that again we have to prefer the type of motor so that the type of motor will be some of the time we are using squirrel cage or the sleeping induction motor so the range of that particular motor will be called it as 25 to 35 hp so this is called it as holding drum drive and basically this is used for the traveling purposes so the traveling in between the different types of the machines or the different types of the sugar cane system from one system to another system then the next type of the application that will be called it as long travel drive so what do you mean by the long travel drive so in that particular system again we have to use the motor that will be called it as slipping induction motor so as we know that the rating of that particular slipping induction motor will be 10 hp okay so we will understand what do you mean by the long travel and cross travel drive okay because we have one of the image in concern with that and we can get the little understanding then obviously again from the cross travel drive we have to prefer again a slipping induction motor and now the rating of this motor will be ranging about 7.5 hp so friends these are some of the auxiliary units by which we have to use nowadays the squirrel cage induction motor or the slipping induction motor according to its requirement so friends now we can see the so these are the different types of motor that we are preferring for your sugar industry now we have to understand different types of drives that we are preferring in the sugar industry so friends as we have the basic fundamental concept of drive that would be the system employed for the motion control that will be called it as drive and if we are using the electrical motors for the driving of that particular motion then it will be called it as electrical drive so in sugar industry as we have seen the different types of motors are used so obviously we have to use the different types of drives so a large variety of driven machines are to be found in the sugar mill fortunately these drives 
fall into only three basic types because in the sugar industry there are a lot of processes. So we have to classify these all processes according to its the drive requirement. So we have to derive or we have to classify these drives which are used in the sugar industry on the basis of the three basic type. So what are the three basic type? So the first basic type will be called it as a constant speed drive. So what do you mean by the constant speed drive? So in the constant speed drive, the speed of that particular drive will be operating at the constant speed. So in the sugar industry, there are the lot of processes by which we have to use only the constant speed motor. So this is the first drive that would be preferred in the sugar industry. And friends, after that, the second type of drive, which will be called it as variable speed over a wide range because in the sugar industry we have the certain applications in the application we have to use the speed of that particular motor will be variable but the range of that particular speed will be very very large so for the sake of that we are preferring the drive which will be classified as variable speed over a wide range so these are the second drive that will be preferred in the sugar industry so friends after that the third uh, classification or the type of that particular drive which will be preferred in the sugar industry that will be called it as variable speed over a limited range because as we seen that in concern with the sugar cane mill we have to vary the speed of that particular machine so we have to use a drive which will be having a variable speed but the speed range of that particular drive will be limited so for the sake of that we have to prefer a different type of drive for that particular system so friends as we seen that in the different types of the mills the constant speed drives are accommodated by uh, electric motors while the steam units are resorted to for the variable speed application so as we seen that there are the different byproducts that we are getting from the sugar industry so according to that we have to use uh, most of the constant speed drives for the electric motors in the sugar industry now uh, previously days we have to use the different types of the steam units that will be driven by the sugar industry but nowadays the total sugar industries are uh, using electric drives itself okay so now we will discuss what do we mean by the constant speed drives so for the sake of the constant speed drive we have to discuss which type of motor will be prefer for the constant speed drive so obviously for the constant speed drive we have to prefer uh, one type of drive that will be called it as three phase induction motors are identically suited because uh, as we seen that the, there are the different advantages that we can discuss later on uh, then the squirrel cage induction motors is used for most normal applications because as compared with the squirrel cage induction motor and slippering induction motor so there are the lot of advantages while we are considering the constant speed drive there are the lot of advantages of the squirrel cage induction motor so that's why instead of the slippering induction motor for most of the purposes we are preferring the squirrel cage induction motor in the normal applications of the sugar industry so where we can use the slippering induction motor so obviously the slippering induction motor will be again used in the industry but where when it's a special requirement so what is the special requirement in the sugar industry so obviously in the sugar cane mill we have the requirement of the very high the heavy starting torque is required and uh, prolonged run up time is required so at the sake of that we have to use a drive which will be having a high starting torque and low speed so obviously while we are comparing the squirrel cage induction motor and slippering induction motor so obviously the slippering induction motor will be that which will be having a very high starting torque and low speed so obviously instead of the squirrel cage induction motor for the sake of the cane mill drive now we are preferring the drive which would be called it as the slippering induction motor drive so that is the various advantages that we are preferring the induction motor for a different purposes so the induction motor will be having some of the advantages so what are the different advantages of the induction motor will be the robust design so obviously this will be the very very important feature of the induction motor then uh, the second the advantage that will be require a very little maintenance as compared with the different types of the dc drives because and these concern with the induction motor there should be no presence of brushes so while we are using in the previous days that the dc motor so the dc motor will be having its commutator circuit its brushes so it will require frequent maintenance but while we are comparing the induction motor as compared with the dc motor so it doesn't require a maintenance 
as compare with the DC motor. Okay, so this is a very important feature. Then the next important feature of the induction motor will be that the control gear is simple and compact. So the control mechanism or the gear system that we are using for the induction motor drive that will be very simple and compact. So that's why we are preferring the induction motor drives for the constant speed drives. And the next that is the ensuring the reliability in the average installation. So due to that the constant speed drives preferred most of the three phase induction motor in the different types of industry. So that's why the efficiency of that particular induction motor will be again larger than the DC motor because in DC motor again we will require larger maintenance but in concern with the three phase induction motor we will require very very little maintenance. So due to that the efficiency of the induction motor will be very very large okay as compared with the DC motor. So friends uh, now we have to understand which type of variable speed over a wide range type of drive that we are preferring for the different types of the sugar industry. So friends as we seen that it is a variable speed over a wide range. So friends while we are discussing the wide range of speed so in previous days we are preferring the different types of the drives that will be called it as the DC drive. So obviously we have to discuss variable speed over a wide range. So the advantage of the DC motor is that it will be give you a better speed regulation. So the wide range of speed will be available in concern with the DC motor. So friends in the previous days we are preferring the wide Leonard system. So basically wide Leonard system it is one of the type of the control system that will be preferred for the basically the DC motor speed control strategy. So for the sake of that we have to use the wide Leonard system drive for that particular uh, sugar industry in the previous days but nowadays we are preferring the AC motor. So along with that again we have to discuss uh, variable speed over a wide range uh, drives that will be preferred as a DC motor. So for the controlling of the DC motor we have to use the different types of drives. So such a drives will be called it as the grid controlled mercury arc converters. So before 1990 we have to use this type of before we have to see that is 1990 or sometime before before use before 1970 okay so we have to prefer uh, that is before 1990 or before 1970 we have to use the different types of the rectifiers this would be called it as grid controlled mercury arc rectifier but nowadays so Nowadays means what that is after 1990 or after 1970 we have the use the diode family then transistor and after 1990 so modern train we are preferring the solid state converter. So what doing by the solid state converters we are using the SCR control rectifier for the controlling of that particular DC motor in a different types of industries. So obviously in the DC motor that we are using the grid control mercury arc rectifier solid state converters along with that we have to prefer some of the times of the wide Leonard system because we have to give a variable speed. So what do you mean by the variable speed we have to control the speed that is below the base speed as well as above the base speed. So obviously this will be the best suited method by which we can get the speed control method of your DC motor that will be treated as below the base speed as well as above the base speed so that the system will be called it as wide Leonard system. So that's why we are preferring this system. Nowadays for a variable speed over a wide range system that is uh, some of the time in concern with the auxiliary unit. So in concern with the auxiliary unit we have to use uh, some of the AC commutator motors. So what do you mean by the AC commutator motor? So these AC commutator motors will be treated as uh, there are the classification of the AC commutator motors. So the first classification of the AC commutator motor that will be preferred for the different types of the the auxiliary unit in the different types of the system. So that will be called it as the universal motor. So what do you mean by the universal motor? We have the basic fundamental concept. So these universal motor drives are the drives which are operated on the both AC and DC supply and uh, it will be having its a different advantage. So that's why this uh, universal motor drives are preferred for the different applications uh, that will be require a variable speed over a wide range. Then after that uh, one of the motor which will be called it as again the classification of the AC commutator motor. So that will be called it as repulsion motor. So what do you mean by the repulsion motor? So the working of this repulsion motor is totally based upon the working of the repulsion type of magnetic action. So depending upon that particular magnetic action this type of motor will be having 
the name that will be called it as repulsion motor and this repulsion motor again having its a different type of the advantages so due to that this the repulsion motor will be used for a particular purpose in the different types of the auxiliary unit in the sugar industry so these are the different uh, system that we are using for the variable speed over a wide range system of your system nowadays we can uh, discuss uh, the different types of the controllers so first of all we can understand that will be called it as the first system uh, that we are using for the dc drive so that is uh, basically we have to understand the mercury arc control rectifier so friends we have to understand what do we mean by the mercury arc control rectifier so very very simple basic fundamental i think we have discussed earlier so in the mercury arc control rectifier we have to use the different two types of uh, diodes so first this is the uh, anode this is a uh, cathode okay so for the sake of that we have to use a vacuum tube okay and in that particular vacuum tube we have to use the cathode material so in that particular we have to use uh, so this is the cathode system so i can replace this cathode system by means of this so again we have to take the two terminals of anode so this is the cathode which will be having the mercury in the liquid form so we have to apply the uh, system voltage across to that particular points so in the dc mercury arc control rectifier while we are uh, applying the external voltage to that particular the anode system so obviously while we are applying the anode system supply so this anode and cathode will liberated electrons so for the manufacturing of anode we are using the graphite type of material so while we are applying the voltage across that particular the anode terminals so this cathode and anode both will liberated electrons but the capacity of the electron liberated from that particular cathode unit which should be very very larger because this will be the vacuum tube or we call it as we are using the gas envelope for that particular system and for the sake of the, that particular gas envelope the arc will be flowing from that particular basically anode to cathode so what do you mean by arc because as we seen that while we are applying the voltage across that particular anode terminal the cathode and anode liberated its electron but the capacity of the liberated of electron at the cathode which will be very very larger so for the sake of that these electrons are uh, attracted towards basically the anode circuit and as we know that the direction of the flow of electron and the direction of the current will be obviously opposite for the sake of that a unidirectional current will be flow so friends in that the dc mercury arc control rectifier we are applying the alternating supply and we are getting output that is the unidirectional flow of current so that the alternating quantity of current will be converted into dc current so this is dc mercury arc control rectifier but after uh, 1990 or we call it as after 1970 these methods are replaced by the second method which will be called it as scr control so we have the basic fundamental concept of the scr control series so i think we have uh, getting the basic fundamental of the scr control so what do you mean by scr control again we have the alternating current supply we have to use the different types of the converter circuit so this is one of the type of the converter circuit by which we can get the system so this is the motor now i can replace this by motor it's a fundamental element so these elements will be r l and it is a separately excited motor so this will be the symbol of the motor the current flowing through that particular circuit will be i a okay so while we are applying the ac alternating current supply so this is the dc motor so or this the dc drive will give you the output in concern with that particular system while we are changing the firing angle of this particular thyristor so we can get the change of the output of that particular motor so this type of drives will be called it as scr because we are using one device that will be called it as scr which will be having a three terminals which will be anode second that is we call it as cathode and third terminal which will be called it as gate so this is called it as anode cathode and gate terminal scr control and nowadays we are preferring that is a uh, ward leonard so we have the concept of ward leonard system so 
in the wide leonard system i think we had already discussed what do you mean by the wide leonard system in the earlier application so we can get the detailed concept of the wide leonard system there again we have to tell what is the fundamental concept in wide leonard system so suppose the rating of this particular motor will be 1500 rpm and if you want to control the speed of that particular motor that is below the 1500 means we have to control this the speed of motor that is 1200 we have to prefer wide leonard if you want to control the speed of that particular motor that is 1700 again we have to prefer the wide leonard because in that particular wide leonard system we have to control both the control methods of that particular drive that the drive control methods will be called it as the armature voltage control or the field flux control by which we can get the variable speed range of that particular system so these are the different types of drives that we are preferring for the sugar industry now friends we will discuss the applications of that particular drive so as we seen that this is the trolley application because as we seen that this is the sugar cane trucks are there from which we have to grab this type of the sugar cane this is the grab type of the system which will be grab the sugar cane from that particular truck and now this sugar cane will be inserted into the sugar cane mill preparation unit in which we have to cut the pieces of that particular sugar cane by which we have to control the different types of the sugar cane shape by which we have to create a juice so obviously for the sake of that we have to use one type of the trolley so this grab type of the object or the load which will be driven by this trolley mechanism so we have to use the different types of the crane system and the for the sake of that particular crane system again the requirement because we have to lift a large amount of torque so again for the sake of that requirement of the motor will be look like that because it will be having a high starting torque again torque and low speed application so again for the sake of that particular application we are using a slip rig induction motor for that particular system so again that will be called it as a variable speed over a limited range okay so this is one of the system so now we will discuss what do you mean by the variable speed drive with the limited speed range so obviously variable speed drive with limited speed range that will be preferred obviously for the very very important application so the most important application of this type of drive is that the driving cane milling unit because as we know that the various important part in the cane mill unit itself we have to extract the juice from that particular sugar cane and for the sake of that we have the requirement so what is the requirement again the requirement will be the constant torque over a speed range so the larger constant torque over a speed range so for the sake of that the cane mill use slipping induction motor drive that we had already discussed earlier now friends basically now we want to understand how a slipping induction motor drive will be controlled so this is friends the slipping induction motor control okay so friends as we seen that this is the slipping induction motors rotor circuit because the stator circuit we have not shown so this is the rotor circuit so this will be the phase r this is phase y and phase b friends as we know that for the construction of the slipping induction motor we have to use the different types of the system in which we have to connect one resistance in the h phase of the slipping induction motor so friends as shown in figure the phase r will be having a resistance through a slipping so so this is the shaft of your system these are the three rings which is called it as slipping so in the slipping induction motor we have to connect one resistance in one phase similarly we have to connect the second resistance in the second phase through the slipping so this is the second variable resistance and in the third phase we will see that so this is the third phase so in that particular third phase again from the slipping we have connected one resistance so friends 
while we are considering the speed control strategy of this particular slip ring induction motor because this slip ring induction motor will be preferred in the sugar industry for the controlling of the speed of that particular slip ring induction motor we have to change the value of this particular resistance while we are changing the value of the resistance then obviously the speed of this machine will be changing because as we know that the resistance while we are changing the value of the resistance the current flowing through that particular circuit changing when the current will be changing then obviously as concerned with the fundamental equation of the slip ring induction motor the speed of that particular machine will be changing so this is called it as the slip ring induction motor so friends as we seen that uh, this is the slip ring induction motor will be using the different types of drive so the controlling option of that particular resistance will be very very important and for the sake of that the controlling action of that particular resistance nowadays we are preferring a different types of the power electronic devices so friends i think in the previous video that we had already discussed how we can control the slipping of your induction motor by means of the power electronic devices again i will tell you how the speed of that particular slipping induction motor will be controlled by means of these particular power electronic devices so friends as we shown in that particular system we have to control the value of the resistance and for the controlling the value of the resistance we are using one of the power electronic devices so that uh, the power electronic devices may be used as an transistor we have to take uh, one of the example of the transistor why we are preferring the transistor instead of transistor you can prefer scr no problem but we have to take so this transistor will having a three terminal first terminal is emitter this is base and this is collector so friends for the sake of that particular base system we have to control the duty ratio of that particular transistor circuit so we have to connect one base drive to that particular system so this base drive will changing the value of this particular resistance while we are changing the value of this particular resistance the speed of your slip ring induction motor drive will be changes so friends nowadays we are preferring such type of the transistor control or we call it as modern electrical drives that we are preferring for the controlling of your slip ring induction motor so that will be the basic fundamental thing okay so now friends there are the lot of disadvantages of the slip ring induction motors controlling circuit that will be called it as the rotor resistance control because lot of energy is wasted in the particular form of that particular resistance so instead of that there are the different types of so lot of energy is wasted so there are lot of disadvantages of the slipping induction motors so rotor resistance control so instead of that there was one speed control technique which should be very very popular in the industry nowadays and most of the induction motors are controlled by this method only so that the method of the speed control of the induction motor that method will be called it as variable frequency control so the drives which are using that particular technique of the variable frequency control the drive will be called it as variable frequency drive so friends as we seen that these are the various units of the sugar industry so in the sake of that particular sugar industry we are preferring the different types of drives because this is the motor generator side or we call it as a different applications of your motor and for that particular driving of your slip ring induction motor we are preferring one drive that drive will be called it as a variable frequency drive so friends there are lot of advantages of the variable frequency drive because there should be uh, no separate adding resistance in concern with your system so this variable frequency drive which will be having the efficiency as compared with the other type of the speed control technique because in the induction motor there are the different types of the speed control technique that is a changing of number of pole changing the voltage that is in concern with the slip ring induction motor we are having the rotor resistance control the slip power recovery scheme but the cost but the efficiency of that particular speed control technique will not be greater but very popular method which will be having a greater efficiency wide range of speed control that will be at the limited cost so the life of that particular drive will be very very larger so that the system will be called it as variable frequency drive so friends as we shown that in that particular variable frequency drive according to the fundamental equation that is ns is equal to 120f upon p while we are changing the value of the frequency of your system we can control the speed of that particular slipping induction motor itself so 
we can change the value of the frequency we can get the speed control so we have to understand this was the sum of the block diagram of the variable frequency control so this is the induction motor that we are using in the different types of the sugar industries so suppose we are having the supply that will be called it as phase r phase y and phase b so this is the three phase supply that will be given to your diode bridge rectifier so as we know that suppose we are having the ac supply so this ac supply will be given to your diode bridge rectifier so this diode bridge rectifier which will be converting suppose we are giving 415 volt alternating supply so this diode bridge rectifier will convert that the 415 volt ac supply into the dc supply so this dc supply will not be a pure so this is a pulsating dc so we will require some of the filter circuit so from that particular filter circuit we have to purify we have to filter out we have to remove the ripples in that particular dc supply and now we are giving the pure dc supply to that particular inverter so this is the storing capacitor so this capacitor will be giving pure dc supply to that the inverter so what will be the function of that particular inverter so basically we are using voltage source inverter or current source inverter in that particular inverter methodology so this inverter will be device which will be convert that the direct current supply into a alternating current supply so now again we will give that the alternating current supply to your three phase induction motor so friends by the changing of this particular the value of the supply terminal to the inverter circuit so we can control the supply voltage of your induction motor and why we are changing the supply voltage of that particular uh, induction motor then we can change the speed control strategy of that particular system so friends this is called it as the inverter control or we call it as a variable frequency drives very very important function so friends as we seen that for that particular inverter we are requiring the different input signal because the speed control technique itself it is called it as variable frequency so we have to change the value of the frequency and now we have to give some of the input according to our requirement okay so for the sake of that now we have to use a different input signal that the various input signal such a input signal may be voltage or your frequency so we are giving some of the time voltage some of the time of frequency so depending upon your speed reference because as we seen that this is not the closed loop this is the open loop system i have shown but in actual system there should be a closed loop system so by which suppose if you want to get the speed control of that particular drive for a particular speed range so depending upon the speed reference or the speed range we have to change the reference value and according to this the speed control strategy it can change its value of the voltage and frequency so while we are changing the value of the voltage and frequency so obviously while we are giving the input of that particular frequency to that particular inverter circuit then obviously it will changes the speed of your motor so friends this is actually the system by which we can get a variable frequency speed control technique or we call it as the vfd which will be employed for your induction motor so why we want to control that the v by f because we have the very basic fundamental concept so that the basic fundamental concept that is v is equal to f into 5 that is the voltage which will be given to that particular induction motor is the product of frequency into 5 so if you want to constant uh, value of flux because the constant value of flux will not be there then will be a different type of the saturation or the different types of losses will be there so due to that we have to maintain this ratio that is v by f ratio constant so that's why we have to maintain this v by the f ratio constant by the means of this particular block so that's why we are giving the input voltage and the frequency to that particular inverter circuit so this is the actual working of your variable frequency drive of your induction motor so friends in this way we have a detailed study the different types of the electric drives that we are preferred for the sugar industry thank you